Not long after you wake up tonight, Gregory knocks on the door of your apartment. Hey, I came to pick you up. Miss Langley wants to see you. Do you know what she needs me for? I'm not in the position to ask. He smiles politely. The car's waiting, shall we? You wrestled with the same thoughts a few nights ago. Maybe you should just leave, disappear, let Sophie find somebody else to employ. But then you remember the Anakta being cut down by Kadir and how close you were to the same fate not even a week ago. And that, it must still happen if you step out line. You follow suit. As with your previous visit here, Sophie seems not entirely present when you enter. Her eyes are locked to one of the paintings in the room. You're pretty sure it's been here before, but she's behaving as if she's seeing it for the first time in her life, entirely entrance. Gregory clears his throat. Sophie turns to the bird of you, a bit of irritation in her countenance. Which soon gives way to a pleasant warm smile. You're here. Excellent. Thank you, Gregory. Her driver leaves and she turns her attention to you. I hope you had a good few nights and made some new acquaintance. But I have to say I'm happy to see you, Sarah Kimia. Thank you for coming. The change of the mood in the room is so sudden and startling. It makes you consider the true power of vampire charisma. Rationally, you know you're being manipulated, you don't even care. Her eyes, her emotions, her entire body language all feel 100% genuine in expressing legitimate interest in you and your well-being. I have a request for you tonight. I need you to find somebody for me and make a delivery. She points to the statue on the side of the apartment. You notice a plain looking pen drive lying in the corner, right next to where the inanimate archer's bow touched the pedestal. The man you'll be looking for call himself Kaiser. He has eyes and ears all around New York and is ready for something to happen here without his knowledge. I need you to take his memory stick and bring it to him in exchange. He'll give you an address which I need to know as soon as possible. You're about to ask what's on the drive. Sophie proves to be one step ahead of you. Oh, don't worry about the contents. They're encrypted. A precaution if the night fell into the wrong hands, but it won't, yes? She gives you a smile that just a handful of nights ago would make you feel like melting. Oh, and Sarah Kimi, Kaiser is a Nosferatu, that twisted the form lineage of kindred. His old and his age made him even more paranoid than others of his clan tend to be. He hosts many havens and changed them often. From what I have gathered, Hema 107 should be found at the park on Coney Island tonight. You have to identify them somehow. I'm told Kaiser has spent many of his nights these past few years being driven around the city in a black limo. Maybe keep your eyes open for it. I smile again, but much shorter. Anything more on Kaiser? He's been here a long time, about as long as I have. He got into a lot of trouble for trading information to both the Annex and the Camry Camarilla before, but ultimately got away with scot free. Kaiser's swap up information proved to be strong enough to shield him from the consequence of playing both sides. Some say it's the best proof of his abilities. In any case, be careful when talking to him. He's very particular about everyone's etiquette except his own. Good night and good luck. She flashed one last mile at you and turns back to the painting, clearly done with the conversation. You pocket the memory stick and head out towards Coney Island. It takes you the better part of an hour to reach the lights and sounds of the Coney Island amusement park from the city. The drive is almost pleasant at this time of night. Thank God for Bell Parkway. There's plenty of people here tonight, but nobody who stands out as a traveling purveyor of secrets. Then again, if they did stand out, it would have been kind of honest, right? Nothing to do but figure out the right approach. Search for signs of Kaiser. There's plenty of nooks and crannies to investigate here, but if Kaiser frequents this area, there has to be some clue to grab onto, right? You spend a good hour uh, snooping around ice peel for the black limo Sophie mentioned 
or any sign that a Nosferatu or any vampire has a haven around these parts. Zilch. And no one, you turn back towards the light and amusement park and find there's a man sitting in your way. He's got an oversized jacket on him and an air of a junkie or dealer. Who knows what he's got in those pockets? You lost? Maybe. What's it to you? What kind of answer is that? Your swoop of fat? It looks like you intend it. Like, trying to guess your real purpose here. Get out of it before I kick your ass. I'm just looking for a guy. Drives around in a black label. Stop it sometimes. Ring any bells? No idea what you're yapping about. It's a terrible liar. Clearly full of shit. Tell him Sophie sent you. Listen, I was sent here by Sophie Lamb. He has something for Kaiser. I need to contact him and pass it on. Nothing more to it. Don't know. And I told you already. I don't know who Kaiser is either. This is a doubt in your face. Fuck it. Stay right there. He produces phone. It's a fancy model. Doesn't look like anything readily available on the market. Unlocks it. Picks a number. Two tones go by. A voice on the other side. Sorry to bother you again, boss. Yeah, I know how much you need a lot. That, that sounds very nice. Um, there's somebody here who wants to see you. They would Langley? Sophie Langley? Yeah? A string of loud obscenities fill the phone. The man wins. And push it away from his head and the call stops. Almost immediately, a chime counts laugh from Sesame Street. Wow, and that's an instant message sent to the phone. He's um, on his way. Don't go anywhere. They're inside the limo, it used to be a luxury lounge. The kind with a strip of pole and a bath full of alcohol. It has none of that currently. Instead, there are monitors and consoles. Dozens of displays, each one showing something different. Surveillance camera footage, stock market quotes, television news, emails, tweets, silent movies, lo-fi footage of a gory torture session. You wonder if the limo's owner can focus on anything when surrounded by all oh, this visual noise and then rest. There's nobody there, or is there? He blinks into existence on a leather carved couch, attempting to maintain something that approximates a right of presence. You are 100% sure that's Kaiser. The guy has the ability to stay invisible. Surrounded by the dim computer screen lights, his switches are even more ghastly than you imagine. All sharp angles of twisted bone, severe flesh, and crooked teeth. He bears them in an awful parody of a smile. They're all close behind you. So, that was a good Vita outside tells me Sophie Langley sent you her. You've got something for me. You reluctantly pull the flash drive from your pocket and slowly pass it to Kaiser. He plugs it into a USB port in the arm of his chair and displays the data on one of the screens that happened to be turned away from you. It takes him a minute to access the data. Who do you people think I am? I've seen this footage a week ago. He plugs the pen right up and throws it back to you in disgust. Tell Sophie the deal's off. She wants her address. She gives me something else. I don't think using person, this guy's going to work. <laughs> He's been here long, and if you try to use it, he will get real piss off. How about this? Ask how can you make it up to him? I'm sorry, this proof disappointing you, Mr. Kaiser. Can I do something to make it up to you? It seems genuinely impressed. Now that's what I like to hear. Yeah, I was just about to mention it. In fact, I have something in mind. We'll talk again soon. You do that for me. The address is yours. Now, would you be so kind as to get the fuck out of my car? The pressure you're done in. You get out, close the door behind you, and the car immediately starts backing up. The opaque window slides at you, and soon the limo's on its way out. 
<clears throat> car says lucky is nowhere to be seen. So you make your way to your car and drive back, wondering what tomorrow brings. Still, the other side, Pope. Let's do it. When you get to the internet cafe, Hope is already waiting on the street. The side catch you off guard. A part of you suspect she might be more, but shut in my haven is my castle type. Perfect timing. We need to go for a ride. Get in, get in, get in. She doesn't wait for your response and jumps behind the wheel of the lavender vintage roaster. Instead, the engine starts roaring expectantly, causing everyone's heads to turn. I don't think to attract needless attention. You quickly slip into the back seat of the car. The moment you shut up, you shut the door behind you. The vehicle set off, tires screeching. Sorry for not bringing you. And you up to speed first, but hey, this is NYC. Everyone is always in on Russian. This is even more true when you're kindred. Now, allow me to take care of some business and I'll be right there with you. Even as she's zooming past the traffic, she's still on her phone, of course. Uh, what's your... What? Let's just ignore that. Watch the road, please. Shouldn't you look at the road from time to time? It might come as a bit of a shock to you, but I'm pretty decent at multitasking. It's pretty hard to make a living in the city. You gotta be at the top of your game at the all times. Might as well explain my business plan to you while I'm at it. So another extremely online mark based in New York goes by the name of Delph Null. Told me to Google. Ethereum a few years ago. That way I got into Bitcoin. And I found a new religion 23 years ago, selling visions of governance replaced by benign code and decentralized consensus, mass rule by algorithms. That's just that's a lot of physics. Aided man child investors are trying to shape their reality through sheer fanatical zeal and dedicated collectors of something as abstract as rare. SHA256 decryptions. Her driving style is far more aggressive and dangerous than you're comfortable with. Is it just you or does she pick into the rear view mirror all more often than she looks straight ahead? A hyper speculative environment where nothing has real value. All the abstract beliefs matter and your life savings can be ruined by a single bullshit trip. How could I refuse the allure? I've started buying low and selling high on a variety of shady 24-7 exchange that allowed me for 100x leverage, as in they would lend me 100x the camera I could bet with. I got lucky at the beginning and kept the ball on, shouting long impulsively, recklessly. I got to the point where I became too big to fall and that's when I cash out. <clears throat> the car came to, comes to an abrupt halt. You bump up again against the seat in front of me. And I kind of press space, but I have to use my mouse. Okay, this story will be continued later. We're here. Right at our first stop, I will need you to do me a favor. Okay. What favor? <laughs> Nothing too difficult, literally a jump out, jump in kind of deal. See, that weird guy in Yankees, full cap standing around the corner, approach him, tell him you are young, hot, petted, in June, and take a phone, he gives you and bring it here. Okay. Get going, honey, it's illegal to park here. You jump out of the car and approach the man who has pointed out. Not a lot you can tell him about him based on his appearance, aside from the fact he seems pretty shady. The guy assumes a comically threatening pose as you approach him. How do you want?
Oh, no offense, but I kind of expected it, girl. I mean, no, yeah. My bad for assuming. Damn. He takes the phone out of his pocket and covertly passes it to you. Everything has been prepared and preloaded according to your instructions. Should take about two minutes to transfer the data. Now get out of here. The man walks away with an exaggerated hip hop gait. You hop back into Hope's car. She immediately steps on the gas pedal. You got the phone? You're the best. Pass it to me, please. She connects the two smartphones using a cable and begins some sort of data transfer. Looks like it's an identical model. After a minute or so, the process is complete. All right, goodbye, lovely. You have served me well. Hope opens the car window, grabs her old phone. You're not an expert to recognize the exact model. It definitely looks like it had a 800 price slap on it and toss it out the window. Surprise. You look behind you and see a car in the opposite lane running over the abandoned device. Hope notice your quizzical look. I've been needing a lot of burner phones lately, and I'm not going to use some cheap piece of shit, so it's an, a pretty expensive necessity. Crossroads, red line. She takes advantage of the moment to shoot a driving selfie. That strategically excludes her face and upload it to Instagram. You notice her handle there is Versace Beauty. Now, I was telling you a story. Bitcoin. She was casting out. Right. At some point towards the end of 2011, I become convinced I need to cash out. There was no way the bubble was going to last forever. <clears throat> I always knew there would be no graves of wrath for the cryptocurrency era. It would have to be a series of profound antisocial disconnected events. The whole crypto culture was a decentralized church of lone millennials who rejected all established modern values and kept atoning for the original sin of not buying Bitcoin back in 2013. Another abrupt last second turn, you get pressed against the window. What the hell is it with her driving style? Better life you have never wanted to live anyway. You get a chance to win a priceless pipe, nothing. Untether yourself or worldly desires, find joy in societal ideation. To this day, money holds no real value to me. It's an abstract as a video game score, a bunch of numbers on the screen. This joyless world changed me forever. I knew I had to escape. So I took my past of fictional dollars to a new area. Arena, elite NYC social circles, not because I wanted to scam them and make more. But because I wanted to finally have some goddamn fun. I mean, of course, I had to scam them in the process, but it was only in service of becoming something more than a star, a constellation. Another abrupt stops, this time next to the entrance to a shifty looking back alley. Alright, friend, this time you are Licky Gut Syndrome, Whistleblower, Extra Dinero. Whatever, press Snick Fuck wants a lick, you've got it. Got it? Uh huh. Sorry for putting you out there in my place, but I only personally contact people as a last resort. It gets harder to protect my identity each time I show my face out there. And since I've got you, a man is waiting for you in this back alley. He's paying back a favor with a pen drive containing crucial information. We need to stay safe in this city. Retrieve it. I'll be circling around the air and make sure we aren't in danger right now. When you're done, get back in and pick you up everything clear. Good. You can the car and see it drive away in a hurry and then head into the narrow passageway. Sure enough, there's a man waiting for you at the end of the back street, unshaven, wearing wrinkled clothes. What a nervous eye tick. He looks even dodgier than the last guy you have met. When you approach, he gives you a mean look. You lost or something. You said you've got a little something that might interest me. Of course, of course. Straight to the point, aren't you? Alright then. Clumsily, he produced a USB sticks out of his front shirt pocket and holds it before your face. When you reach out to take it, he pulls his hand back and gives you a slight grin. Getting all this data was risky, you know. Miss Montgomery is 
an unusually secretive person taking up dirt on her took more effort than expected. Effort that should be rewarded, I think. The more you ask around about her, the more you expect a last thing. Give up your inquiries, which are completely useless, that your doorstep may be attached to a severe cat head. You catch my drift? The secrecy that surrounds her screams. Friends in high place. Brave new world order. Illuminated shit, you know. Makes me think I deserve some hazard pay. Start walking away. You try to imagine what hope would do if she were in your place. Then you simply turn away. Start walking back where you came from. Calmly, wordlessly, no negotiations. Just as you are about to walk out of sight, you hear an annoyed grunt behind you. Alright, alright, I shouldn't have you put. I should have put you in the spot like that, my bad, okay, get back here. You turn around, look at the journalist expectantly. He sighs and extend the hand holding the pen drive towards you again, you take it. Oh yeah, one more thing, one more thing. Not really sure what that's about, but one of my informants claims you might be interested in this. He rush just in a jacket pocket and presents you with something wholly unexpected. It's a bag of blood. Label simply S A B R H to give it a closer look. But that doesn't answer any question that just appear in your mind. You pick into the journalist's cold blue eyes and see them twitch uncontrollably. Don't ask me. They said you'll know what to do with it. Lucky gut, come on, take it. This seems rather shady. This guy, I think he has been controlled by that vampire. You know, the vampire he was sent to ask, I will refuse it, but keep it. I have no idea who that informant is, but they have been feeding you bullshit, buddy. Yeah, I don't think so. Another eye twitch and an awkward silence. You give the blood back on last chance and leave the alley away the way you came from. Hope's car appears behind the corner just as you walk out to the street. It doesn't even full stop on your approach, but slow down just enough so that you can jump in. The moment you close the door, she pressed into the gas pedal with her full strength, causing the engine to roar. Her driving style definitely doesn't reflect how laid back she seems as a person. You throw the pen drive on the seat next to her. Perfect. Any problems? How did the meeting go? You relate the entire back alley encounter to her towards the end of story. You notice she's not staring at the road of her phone, but directly at your face. The realization startles you. You've got that bag of blood with you? Laugh it with him. Fell fishy somehow. Huh. Anything particularly? Anything particular about it? Nothing. Just a label saying A B R H. She steps on the brakes. Fuck, 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 fuck. I'm okay. She grabs the pen drive you have obtained and throws it out of the window. Looks like that is her favorite method of taking care of problems. That bag was a message. AB negative. It was to be my blood type. It's the rarest one found in less than 100% of the unit state's population. Glad you haven't drank it. <clears throat> Who knows what they have done to the bag? Some NYC vets can tell you why sorry about using irradiated blood to locate and kill other kindred. Seriously, glad I haven't drank from it. But I said the story, yeah, but still, I wonder if this could have done anything to us, but that would be some kind of five dimensional chess move. Yep, I was kind of suspicious about that. Offering you something that seems too good to be true, you have to be skeptical about it. But yeah, this contact is compromised and needs to be cut off. Goodbye, my journalist friend of me, and goodbye, dear. Like you got syndrome, you have bought our life in usefulness. After a brief period of hesitation, she deletes the whistleblower extra dinner account and size. Another one buys it dust. Admit it. When you're done relaying the story, she chuckles. You're really hard on the out of the deal, aren't you? Uh, I suppose the silver lining is that I don't have to worry about that anymore. Still, looks like I'm in. With the trouble than I expected, never mind. We've got one to stop plan, then I explain everything. 
Besides, I've got another story to finish. I was talking about Bitcoin. And then where did I stop? Constellation. Becoming a constellation. Alright, you know who saw the real face of this city? Anna Dalvi. Ever heard of her? A Russian working class girl born as Anna Sorokin. She moved to New York in 2013 and convinced everyone she's this insanely rich trust fund kid and the wealthy German Harris. Manhattan and its total fell for it and they kept buying it for years while she kept swindling them. She only got arrested in 2017 after having stolen almost $300,000. <clears throat> Sorokin created her Delphi persona out of thin air. Convinced everyone she was going to set up an art fund and kept tasting all of life's finest pleasures while being basically broke. <clears throat> she even made up a fake family financial advisor and killed off when he became a liability. And apparently, most of the rich victims never admitted to being scammed out of shame. By now, you're sure. The way she scrutinized her surrounding, a reckless driving, she's trying to escape somebody. Now, Delphi's lock up with murderers in writers, writing down her memoirs, apparently picking a lot of fights. God bless her heart, she'll forever be, forever be an inspiration. But I have more advantage than she ever did. I have my own considerable funds, and I can rely on many more made up people than just some OS financial advisor. A whole bunch of fake content creators and influencers that every rich MS wants to get in touch with and collaborate. Makes it super easy to get more money than I invest. You have seen it firsthand. Both as a deceiver and the deceive. It's a city of illusions. Make non-existent money. Come up with fictional status. Play nonsensical Camarilla games. And one day you might just find yourself at the top. Alright, we're reaching our last stop. Now look around. You're coming up on a parking garage. You're gonna take an elevator to the 17th floor. Give the masked man you meet in front of the, this memory card. It contains an uh, art house movie I've made. You mean a vampire movie? Yes, yeah, a movie you've seen me rehearsing in my haven. You don't think I was doing that just for the show, did you? I found some filthy rich Manhattan perps who would pay a fortune for a convincing vampire camp show. I don't need money with the IT industry connections. Give me an idea. Why don't we give them this memory card or get access to take that should allow us to take on my biggest enemy in this city. So your nickname this time is going to be a crash. You are momentarily dazed and can't immediately understand what happened. The first thing you know for sure is if you were still a normal human being, you will be dead for sure. You really replay the last few seconds in your head, the car appear out of nowhere and crash it can seem to hopes if they got the maximum speed it was able to achieve in this close off space. <clears throat> the driver has already managed to kick out the mango door next to him and stumble out of seat. Stumble out of his seat. Now he wordlessly approached the trunk and takes a large caliber silenced pistol out of it. He starts approaching the lavender work of Hope's car. Obviously ready to finish the job he start, you have to be fast and violent. It's you or him now. Celerity. Your instinct stick over that will stop me just as you start running. He can see you, of course, but not as a well-defined shape, it's a blur, and his speed is faster than his aim. It gets closer to him, he's scared. It's next to him, he's terrified. A serious a superhuman swift punch ruptures his body in all sorts of horrifying ways. His world briefly turns into an ocean of agony, then disappears forever. You stand up above the gunman's body, trying to calm yourself on your killer's instincts. That's when you hear her voice. Uh... Hope Slater's out of her car and sees you standing over your side. Oh, you did pretty good. She approached the body of the driver you killed and kicked it so she can take a better look at it. Upon seeing the front of the corpse, she lets out an annoyed grunt. Knew it would be this asshole. He's been following us all day and I know just who, who it belongs to. 
Even before she starts talking, she is already trying to reach someone through a video call. Eventually, she, she succeeds. You see a nonchalant woman in business casual clothes on a smartphone screen. Kara Montgomery, how can I help you? Kara. Oh, didn't expect you to ever reach me through this channel. Have you thought things through? Wait, did something happen? Did something happen? Your fucking girl has just tried to kill me, you crazy bitch. That's what fucking happened. Calm yourself for crisis. This is a baseless accusation. I know it's from Double Spire. He's been working in your motherfucking company. Come on, you know I can't be held responsible for the independent action of my subordinates. Why don't we just meet up and talk it over? Hope this connects up call and instantly blocks Kara from contacting them. You corporate shithead, you make me sick. Ta she turns her gaze to the dead girl. I dispose of him. Help me put him in my car. Thirty seconds later, his body's laying on the back seat of the lavender color rack. Okay, good. Now take a look at the scene of carnage in front of you. Every second we're here, get us closer to a serious masquerade violation. I have to exchange my palmy, the worthy masterpiece, for the good some other time. She gets behind the wheel and you follow her inside. Meet me in my haven. When I let you know it's safe, or now I need to dump this ass up somewhere. Have my cars fixed and plan a counter attack. You got home to your own haven. She drops you off and before she leaves, she makes what's about to come perfectly clear. If we want to survive in this city, Kara Montgomery needs to die. She disappears into the traffic, you disappear into your place. You need to rest, yes, I can't do anything else. You're walking down the street towards your haven. In some other town, the sidewalks would be deserted at this time of night. In NYC, there are plenty of passerby going about their business. It's easy to be paranoid when you're a vampire surrounded by a crowd of humans. The kindred have many enemies, and all those enemies have one trait in common. They're invisible, and they're distinguishable from normal humanity. Other vampires, hunters, all look like people. He said, oh man, just a tired restaurant worker or candy troll telling your movements. Are the officers either waiting in a pachuca or dinary cops or second inquisition specialists looking to end undead threats? This kind of thinking leads to madness, but you can't shake the feeling that someone's watching you. It's not the first time you fail like this. Whatever this is, it's probably something you have to take care of. Best case, someone is telling you, worst case, you'll be attacked and killed. Unfortunately, being undead has its limitation. The sun is coming up soon, and you're born to a crisp if you stay on the streets. You rush your haven and settle in for the day. This started by the idea that someone might know when you sleep. As you wake from your slumber and emerge from your haven for the night, you notice a familiar face on the side of the street standing on the corner and looking straight at you. It's Kaiser Lackey. Whom you met recently, Jackie, he nudged you, encouraging you to approach. His hands are out of his pockets and he seems pretty relaxed. He's keeping his eyes on the street though, as if making sure you're alone. He smiles awkwardly when you approach. Evening, got something for you from our mutual friend. He produced a crumpled piece of paper from his jacket pocket and hands it to you. Read it, memorize it, then give it back here. It's a letter. The paper might be just a page ripped out by a spiral notebook, but the writing on it is exquisitely detailed and deliberate. It reads, Time to square the debt with me. Go to the wine shop at 232 Mulberry Street and ask for the... Okay, I think I need to write this down. Special. Reserve. Donatello Negro Mero When they tell you they don't have it say you are Fidel Okay, I have to remember this Fidel Servitore Della 
familiar. G. Those exact fucking words. And make sure you get the G right. You get a bottle. Just take it in. Live by saying crazy. Say crazy. Don't ask how much it is or anything else. Just walk out. When you have it, come back to check your boy here and let him know. You don't mess. Memorize that shit and hand it over. What's all this cloak and dagger nonsense? Let us pass us. What's all this cloak and dagger nonsense? That's how the boss likes it. And who am I to argue? I just do what he says. You're about done with the letter? You know the phrase. Mention the letter and the dress, then hand the letter back to Jackie. He immediately reached for a light and burns it, putting out the ash on his boot. So yeah, when you do what the boss asks, come back here so I can tell you where to go next. I'll be in that alley over there. So find me when you have the item, whatever it is, I don't know. And the boss made it extra clear that I shouldn't care so I don't see it. It shuffles away and leaves you to pursue the lead in the letter. Time to pay a visit to no leader. You're right. At the address mentioned in the note, not counting the local restaurant patrons, the street is mostly empty at this time of night, but curiously, the wine shop is still open. Inside, a small middle aged woman with curly hair stands behind the counter in front of entire world wine bottles. There's a door at the end of the room <clears throat> with a small table and a chair occupied by a man with slick, calm black hair who's dressed in a black frost leather jacket. It's reading a newspaper, but pass. That's a little bell rings when you open the door. He takes a sip from a small steaming cup, then gets back to his broad sheet. Good evening, how can I help? Tell her a friend sent you. I think I should redirect here. I hope like a bottle of the yeah, yeah, please. Let me check our stop. She seems to be looking through <clears throat> the database on the laptop sitting on the counter. She puts on a polite smile. I'm afraid we don't have that one at the moment. Sorry. Recite the phrase straight and simple. Casually recite the phrase. And you don't have to do this, it'll make her more suspicious. Ah, in that case, let me see if we have any in the back. Wait here, please. The woman lifts the counter and goes through the doors in the back. The man by the table puts down his newspaper and takes another sip in the cup, washing it down with a cup of water from nearby glass. He tries to hide, it. but there's no doubt he's watching you. About a minute pass. Remain silent and wait. You remind yourself of what Casey wrote in the letter, and you just keep quiet patiently waiting for the woman to return from the back of the store. The man finishes his drink and starts doodling on the newspaper, his eyes darting to you every so often. The doors to the back of the store open, and the proprietor emerges with a small, unlabeled, squat bottle of crimson liquid. She gives you an apologizing smile. Sorry for taking so long. Turns out we did have it. She offers you the bottle and you reach out to grab but she retracts it. You do know what this is, don't you? Okay, I'll try. To use presents here, maybe. You focus your blood and you immediately see both of the people in the shop focus intently on you and see and what you're about to say. I know exactly what this is and I am the right person to give it to. The woman gives you the bottle without hesitation. Gracie. Deciding you have pushed your left fine up, you're not an the store. Then take a brisk walk to your car. Nobody follows you as you leave no later and drive back to your apartment. <clears throat> It takes you some time to find a parking spot, but finally you get out of the car and start looking for a jacket. It's not far from where you parted ways, just under two hours ago. Got the goods? Sure do. 
call. Stand by. Gotta make the call. He takes a few more steps into a narrow space between two buildings and takes out the same high-tech phone you saw him carrying the last time. Hey boss, yeah, they have it. Where do I point them to? Okay. Yeah, I tell them to go there right away. He puts the phone back inside his pocket and turns back to you. Well, this point, half an hour, so you better step on it, see you around. It's just a flippin' salute. Jackie starts walking down the street. You make your way back to the car and drive. You had to push the lim speed limit to make it on time. You're here. Well, it points. It's quite a change of scenery. The place is a post industrial dump. The nearby stadium, notwithstanding. You stop your car once you. You realize that if you go any further down, the potholes are going to kill your chances. You step out into one of those gash in the asphalt, splashing the ankle deep water. Kaiser's limo is nowhere to be seen. In fact, the whole place is pretty much deserted other than the apparent propriety of the lonely bar, a middle-aged woman who was just looking the place up, locking the place up. Mm -mm. Look around for Kaiser. You take a walk around the neighborhood. It mostly consists of rundown shops and garage. More than a few direct cars left here yeah. years back to rush. You imagine it's a great place for one of the civil rights to hide out in. So you're on your guard the whole time, but as well as you can tell, you're the only kindred here. You slowly, when you hear a car stopping nearby, see that's apparently Kaiser Black Memo that you relax a and approach it. Mm -mm. Same as last time, the car door is open, but nobody comes out. You know the drill. This time, Kaiser is visible the first time you look inside. You sit down, close the door behind you. So you pull it out without a hitch, then give it here. You hand the bottle over to the Nosferatu, to the Nosferatu. He uncocks it gently, takes a whiff, and puts the cock back in. Yeah, that's the stuff. Good job, kid. Consider your debt paid. Oh yeah, and also have this. It's what Langley wanted. He pass you an envelope with what feels like a thick card inside. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. Yeah, yeah. I send Jackie over if I ever need something else from you. How about that? Time for you to get out now. He whips you out of the car with the envelope in hand. You get out back onto the torn asphalt and decrepit surroundings. The limo slowly drives away. Finally, you can return to Sophia and bring her what she wanted. Gregory lets you in. You hear a shrill, unpleasant laugh and you realize Sophie's having a guess over. Thomas Atura. You met him. An assignment a few nights back. That shriek is unmistakable. Ah, Saira Kimi. So glad to see you. Tell me, did you two have a chance to talk before? Thomas speaks out before you can. Ah, well, yes, of course. And such a good first impression you made, too. Miss Langley cleared the writing by taking you under her wing. I'm sure she thinks so, too, don't you, Sophie? Why, well, of course, I. Eh? Of course you do, of course. Well, I believe I've got to be going. I wish sure to let Prince Panhurt know your thoughts, Miss Langley. Word for word, are as close as I can remember them. I appreciate it, Thomas. You two enjoy your night now. Good night, Sophie. Sarah came here, cranky boy. It gives you a slight smile. Sophie's driver opens the door for Arturo, and the guest steps out with a single wave of the hand towards his house and you. The doors close. It's quite the character, isn't it? Yes, quite, but he has his use. Thomas has clout in court and access to many juicy details on everyone from the prince to the lowest, lowliest, primogen. It's useful to have him on your side, even if, eccentric. He, even if his eccentricity requires some patience. Speaking of patience, you have been putting mine to the test lately. Did you manage to contact Kess and acquire what I asked for? Mm -mm. Yes, but I had to do another job for him. Yes, I have it, but the data you offer was all news to him. I had to do another job for him before he gave me this card. She retrieves the envelope from you. I'm sure he did. I do hope it wasn't too much of an inconvenience. I had to retrieve a bottle for him. He made me go on an entire separate escapade to retrieve a bottle of wine from my store in Nolita. I had to use code phrase and whatnot. One sharp curve phrase, that degenerate pest. She is visibly agitated, but comes down and smiles at you. Don't worry about it, I'm sure whatever case I had you do, it'll blow over. 
She opens the envelope and looks at the card. You notice the same lettering you saw in case there's no from before, but can't see the details. Her eyes widen. Yes, excellent. I need to call on some favors. I will likely be busy for the next few nights. You have my permissions to show some initiative, my dear. Charge, I will contact you soon. With that, Sophie ushers you outside. Now you'll have to do with the rest of this night as you like. Somebody's watching me, part one. Kara wants to meet her master's voice. Okay, I think I'll complete this quest for her. Hope. When you reach the cafe, you're welcomed by a familiar face of the waiter who first let you inside. You exchange looks and nods. He has his vaping pen in a back pocket. She's been expecting you. Something happened to her car, and she hasn't exactly been leaving her room ever since. He scratches his head, shrugs, and gestures at you to follow him. It's the same route as before. First, beyond the lock at the end of the room with all the computers, then into an endless gray labyrinth. Finally, you reach a door that would look like any other room. Around here, to a random bystander, of course. And now you know. That hope place haven. By now you know that ha hope's haven lies beyond it. The way that bits you, are you, with an exaggerated bow and starts walking back to the cafe. Enter the familiar room. This time's the last inside on. Hope is inside, walking around nervously, overseeing every screen in her sight. When she spots you, she wastes no time on introductions. Kara Montgomery, what do you know about? Her? Not a lot. You could have seen her in listicles such as Top 5 Baddest Women of Tech 2018 12 CEOs who spark innovation through empathy, or 20 entrepreneurs with mysterious ties to Jeffrey Epstein. You don't get to voice your answer. The question was just a minor courtesy. She has a monologue to deliver and she won't allow an interruption. 20 years ago, she was a failed dot com investor. Now she's CEO of Double Spiro, a brand management startup working at the crossroads of big data and influence, influencers culture. The quotation marks are audible, dripping with venom. Long story short, she has spent years convincing her camera contacts, as in out of touch old fast man, but smartphones that Kendrick can benefit from controlling the internet. <clears throat> Her articles have done a lot of research on defects, AI, and machine learning. Her goal is an ability to generate thousands of believably human online accounts. Basically, an army of posters that could brought forth anything into the mainstream discourse. The elders took a while to get the concept, but eventually, Kara got their blessings. The thing is, she claims a tech is ready to be tested, but it needs one final component to work properly, and that's why she paused. She proposed to choose. What choose? The become my friend of face a violent dead kind of choose. Not exactly fucking convincing if you ask me. But no matter how much I hate her gut, this is a blessing in disguise. Hear me out. She'll pick a public place in Manhattan, neutral grounds where we can meet without fear that other party might do something stupid and violate the masquerade she wants to just talk. You'll go there in my place and listen to her terms. We won't accept them, of course. Especially not after she has just tried to kill us. You just steal her voice and walk away. Steal her voice. What next? Will you trade her mermaid tail for her legs? A Disney joke, sweet. What next? Will you hit me with a topical Harry Potter reference? I'm not trying to be an obstacle here. Wait a second, let me explain my plan. You see? There's only one way to even the odds. We have to hit Kara where it hurts, and she's only got one weak point. That was Spiro headquarters. Kara's the only person there who got access to every room. The security is something she came up with herself, voice based, but based on a different password phrase every time. <laughs> that means just recording her talk is not enough if we want to get in. That's why I started selling illicit materials to people with access to advanced defect audio technology. 
I've got it right in this room, and now I want it assembled. But he said, Well, allow me to manufacture a bot that talks like that to monitor data. I need to stay behind. Still, I think the plan is pretty simple. You talk to her while wearing a wire. I process the recordings here to steal her voice. While else, she's wide open. Then we invade Double Spiral and destroy it from within. The evil is defeated. I become a part of your crew. Happy ending for everybody. Uh, how does this sound to you? Well, she even talked to me. She wanted to talk to you. Why would she talk to me? Yeah, she's too stuck up to talk to a total render, but given an opportunity to get Sophie's language right hand to on her side, she won't let it pass her by. And even if you want a minor celebrating this day, I'm sure our connection will happen enough to hear you out. Hope shakes her head and claps her hands. When she speaks up, she sounds different, more space out, stuttering. Alright, let me fix up with a hard wire. She hands you a minuscule earpiece and start attaching a small decorative pin to your clothes, along with some mass wiring. It's a directional microphone. I can clean up the audio later, but keep it pointed directly at Carol as much as possible, alright? You put on the headphones she gave you. It fits snugly deep inside your right ear. One, two, one, two, one, two. The hardware works flawlessly, the audio quality seems great. You give hope an affirmative sign with your head. Beautiful. Card. Designate the meeting place as Vessel. You've heard about the place, right? It's right by the eastern end of the Lincoln Tunnel. A giant pipe staircase. Basically impossible to miss. Manhattan's answer to FL Tower. Or a guarding monument to being only ever so slightly free. Depending on who you ask. I would drive you there, but my car's still in the workshop and I don't want to risk being spotted by Kara's people and I need to process the voice data from here. Which means I have a perfectly acceptable number of excuses for not letting myself get anywhere close to that demonic oh hey. You involuntarily roll your eyes a little bit, or sits in front of her screens, pretending not to have noticed. So are we getting this show on the road, or what? Ready whenever you are. No sense lingering here, you get back to the street and find your car. Wrapping up the show as quickly as possible sounds like a good idea. Around 30 minutes later, you're in front of a vessel. Hope's description, a giant pipe staircase, wasn't particularly helpful. From the distance, the building looks more like a giant honeycomb. They're assigned to swarm with tourist bees. At least during the day, that is. At the moment, the place is close to the general public. A few men who look vaguely threatening and out of place are making sure nobody unwanted gets in. Oh, you have no problem getting up the stairs. All it takes is an exchange of knowing glance with one of the guards you are expected. A lone figure appears in your side, staring down into the streets of Manhattan. You know, city people often complain about being unable to see the staring skies, but I always thought the real tragedy is how they're unable to appreciate man-made sea of lights that surround them. 